Hi there. Quite some years ago now I acquired this very old wheel which I've just kept as a spare. I don't use it very much these days as it's a bit of a dinosaur in mechanical terms. It's built like a tank, it's grossly over engineered and for years now I've been promising myself that one day I'd modernise it replacing its heavy clunking drive arrangement with the latest electronically controlled components uh, such as used in the modern equipment of today. The makers who are no longer in business sold hundreds if not thousands of these wheels mainly to schools and art colleges and the like. It seemed then to be the fashion to have the wheel head at this sort of height for the potter to work in a standing position. There is this rather crude cantilevered seat which can be bolted here onto the front which means climbing up with one's father cumbersome speed control pedal and the other on this footrest bracket here. The wheel stands approximately 8 inches, that's 20 centimetres off the floor and has an incredible six heavy steel legs. I'm going to cut these legs off and uh, reduce the contact with the floor down to three adjustable feet. So now I've uh, removed the cover panels at the front and sides to expose the inner workings. The electric motor through a pulley and a belt drives this larger pulley which runs this stainless steel drive. When the cone is lowered it bears down on the friction plate causing an increase in speed due to the differential in diameters interplaying with each other. As you can see the design of this uh, old-fashioned arrangement requires the use of a huge amount of very heavy metal almost all of which I'm going to strip out leaving just the main central drive shaft and the bottom bearing down here. I've uh, stripped out all the inner workings of the machine and uh, it now just remains for me to uh, grind off these legs. All six legs can be cut off down to this level which will have the effect of reducing the height of the machine to a seat position. Um, I'll put a metal plate in here with a captive bolt uh, enabling levelling at the front of the machine and I'll put two triangular plates in at the bottom at the rear with a similar bolt for levelling also. These are the components I've removed and I've set them here on top of a pair of household weighing scales. You can perhaps just see here through the gap they weigh an incredible 8 plus stones. That's 50 kilograms or 112 pounds. I welded in a steel plate as a platform onto which to mount the new drive equipment. The radial slotted holes in the centre are to fix the new electric motor, allowing it to swivel forwards and backwards to slacken or tighten the drive belt. The electronic inverter will be secured to these aluminium brackets, top and bottom. Here is the inverter now fitted. This converts the 240 volt single phase supply into 240 volt three phase, so that with a potentiometer one can vary the speed of the motor. These are the controls. Stop start buttons, reversing switch, fixed speed lock, and finally the speed accelerator pedal. Pressing the foot pedal pulls this chain which rotates the large nylon gear, which in turn rotates the smaller potentiometer cog. At the opposite end of the pedal shaft, is this spring arrangement which returns the pedal to the stop position. These are the rear adjustable levelling screws replacing the original legs that now got heavy duty plastic feet. I've shortened the seat and given it a more comfortable wider top and beneath there there is the new front end levelling screw. And so now here's the finished wheel with the top tray and outer panels refitted complete with the slurry drain pipe connected. I fitted these two stainless steel posts to the wheel head 
suitably positioned so that they fit the bats that I use on my other wheel so that they are interchangeable. Switching on starts the cooling fan on the inverter. The wheel head speed can be varied from 2 to 200 revs per minute and there are 10 progressive speed lock positions which work in either direction. A gentle tap on the speed lock with either hand or foot stops the wheel turning. Pulling it back out resets it at the required speed. Here it's at its slowest speed of 2 RPM, sometimes needed for delicate banding. Accelerating now up to uh, top speed for centering. And this is about my normal throwing speed. Now throw the first pot on my new, newly refurbished wheel. Acceleration across the speed range is very smooth and responsive, but it's not as quiet as my Fitzwilliam wheel. This speed lock arrangement isn't quite as easy to cancel. However, I'm very pleased with its overall performance. It's certainly an enormous improvement on the original machine. I think I should explain that I already had almost all of the new component parts I've used. I had them to hand salvaged from various other quite different machines that I've created in the past when I was a ceramic tiling contractor. Both the motor and the inverter are actually much larger and far more powerful than needed for this purpose. But it's good to have found a new use for them. And remember, what can do a lot can do a little. The noise is partly from the cooling fan in the inverter and the gearbox, which is part of the motor assembly, generates quite a noise too. Most of the other parts are from my stockpile of discarded items in my workshop, which I've been hoarding over the last 50 years or so. I'm also very fortunate having good friends who've helped me with some of the things that I can't do myself, like the welding, and figuring out all the electronics involved. I haven't kept an accurate record of exactly what I've spent on this project, but I know it's only cost me around about a hundred pounds or so. If you happen to have uh, one of these ancient wheels, I think you would need to budget say three to four hundred on the assumption you would have to buy all new components. But you know, it's amazing how many suitable parts are just lying around unused in people's workshops. And with a bit of ingenuity, you could end up with a top class wheel for very little money. Well, I do hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.